Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Couch Crunch Podcast. I have my co-host Don here with me. Go ahead, Don. Go ahead and introduce yourself. What up, everybody? We're going to get into some of these topics today. Some covering some movies and uh, and some games. All right. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the rest of your weekend. And on this day, on today's episode, we're actually going to go over a few things. We're going to be going over. We need the poo, the blood, and honey. Which I, I'm I'm really curious. I'm really excited to talk about this this topic because it's random as hell. But uh, <laughs> you know, we'll leave it for later. And then the new uh Pinocchio film that's a bit that's supposed to be coming out on Disney. Yeah. Uh Resident Evil uh Resident Evil remake. Uh I'm sorry, Resident Evil 4 remake. Um yeah. and thoughts on that and scorn. And also Fortnite season uh the new season Star Wars theme. So oh, yeah. We're going to go ahead and start off with the whole Winnie the Pooh uh, subject. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I'm a little confused on what's happening here. Um, obviously, we've all known Winnie the Pooh to be this, like, sweet teddy bear that's only been attracted to honey and always somehow getting himself jammed up in, like, trees and stuff like that. And, you know, and this... And this <laughs> right. and And somehow stupid right no and somehow uh you know it's 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 a friendly it's a friendly uh kids kids story tell you know story cartoon whatever so i i have no idea what to say about this because obviously there's no official trailer to this movie so as far as we've seen you know there's only fan made stuff i have no idea where they're getting all the like where they're getting the trailers from right but it's like what happened to to Winnie the Pooh like it went from this this kind hearted bear to like this insane killer or some shit it looks like a grown man in a, in a Winnie the Pooh costume <laughs> <laughs> this is like what is the world coming into where where they somebody gets the rest from, to Winnie the Pooh it's like I, I, recently, I recently seen in this article too I was wondering like how was they able to get around the, the copyright of using that name because I, I I assume like Disney owned the rights to it, but they said that the copyrights went um was free up on uh, in t- this year, twenty twenty two. So anybody is able to use like the the imagery of the Winnie the Pooh from the well from the book, they can't use like the, the image of Disney's version of Winnie the Pooh, but because it's originally a book. And then I did my research as well. Uh, as you said that, you said anybody's up to grabs, uh, you know, for Winnie the Pooh, I'm guessing, like, because nobody wanted it, you know, I mean, because I don't know. I mean, I know there's a lot of fans out there that really enjoy Winnie the Pooh growing up. But mind you, they only love the old Winnie the Pooh growing up because they're from that era. You know, Winnie the Pooh's been around for a very long time now. Um, It's just we didn't know that they were going to be up for grads for like a new director because I did my research as well, because I've never heard of this director before. Hold on. Let me see if I can get his name again. Uh, Reese, Reese fake Waterfield Reese. If I'm pronouncing that right, I'm terrible with names, but this man has never directed anything else. Uh, he's brand new as a director. And, uh, I have no idea who the producer of this film is. Or the, the 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 actors that they casted for this film is just like everybody's new on this project, right? Yeah. So it's like this this thing is like I don't know why they decided to sell the rights to somebody random because obviously it seems like this movie's a continuation from Christopher's Rob Christopher's Robin film, which I've never seen. I I kind of skipped past it because it was like a live action live action yeah. movie for Winnie the Pooh and I didn't understand it. Um, right. But uh, apparently it's a continuation from that because it says it follows it follows Pooh and Piglet as they go on a rampage after Christopher Robbins abandons them. And it's like, so it's like, so he magically turned into, he, he turned from an animated bear to a grown man in a mask. Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> And I seen like it's some world hog like right next to him, some guy in a a, a hog mask as well. It's like the hell is going like if on? we look up some images on there, there's so there's 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 him with the mask. Uh, okay, there's a truck. There's like because I'm looking at the images now. There's like a truck and an abandoned house. It looks like that's his abandoned house or whatever. Uh, the, it has wrote 
there's like a, a scene of the movie that says that they have the the words spell out in blood, uh, get out on the windows. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the piglet outfit too. And it's like, so they just decided to just make them as murderers. Like they're just randomly going around murdering people. I don't, I don't get the concept. Like, yeah, I guess they're just serial it, killers. It, no. it just looks like two grown ass men who didn't grow up, I guess, and just decided to just kill people. And look, there, there's tits and shit in this film too. Like, come on, man. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the, the attentions of this is supposed to be. I don't. But... That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't. It, you know, what would even be funnier is like, what if this ends up being like one of the best horror movies? <laughs> That'd be the joke of the century. I, because like, it would be the joke of the century. Because everything, in my opinion, horror hasn't not been the same ever since like covid hit you know unfortunately yeah um, for horror movies. yeah because i i can't I, I i know all of this is obviously my opinion and it goes by preference but i ha- i don't even remember the last horror movie that was actually really good in my opinion i thought it was like i'm guessing the nun was probably like my first uh like the only film that really was like terrifying to me and that was yeah. like back in like what 2019 or some shit like that uh, yeah, the last good one I seen was a Hereditary, and that was like, oh, that was okay. That was eighteen, yeah, twenty eighteen. So that was like the the last really good film that I watched from horror, and I love horror to death. But it's just like there hasn't been a lot of good horror movies lately. It's just been <laughs> trash. But what if what if that's what? huh? Good. I was about to say I would say I, I did recently see like a horror movie a couple of weeks ago. It's called Hatch, but it's it's a foreign movie. It's uh from Sweden. It's pretty good though. Oh it's, yeah, the, yeah. It's called Hatched. I, I gotta, like, yeah. gotta check that out. But yeah, I mean, pretty, we've right. had we've had a lot of horror movies that came out, but none of them were really successful, and that's including Men that just recently came out for a twenty four from a twenty four productions. It just obviously that movie was just like if if you don't want to be scarred for the rest of your life, I highly suggest you don't watch that film. <laughs> um, yeah, well. Oh yeah, what I was saying earlier too the the book I was referencing is the Winnie the Pooh book from nineteen twenty six. I didn't know Winnie the Pooh was that old. Nineteen twenty six. Damn. Damn, so he's he's kind of been around before even Mickey Mouse, right? Because I believe Mickey Mouse was invented in like nineteen fifty. Right. Oh, right. I'm not sure that Zach did with Mickey Mouse. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Hey, but yeah. So they they was able to get the rights from this version of Winnie the Pooh, uh, the the book version, but not I, the Disney version. I was so wrong. It's actually 1928. Um, but I I didn't know like him and Winnie the Pooh been around for that long. He probably was just yeah. like a a a. a a book, right? Like originally, he was just like a storybook or some shit, right? At first, yeah, it's, like, it's just like a fairy tale book. Yeah, it looks like a regular bear, you know. And then Disney just did, put their spin on it, and they just put a shirt on top of him, and then called it a day. Yeah. <laughs> didn't really do too much. Same thing with Pinocchio too. They that's not actually originally uh, a Disney thing. That's from a a foreign. I, I believe somebody like a, a Italy, Italy writer writer oh that just created these like fairy tales yeah gotcha and then they just brought it off of them well yeah. it kind of stole the idea actually but, i kind i kind of hoped but in this case i kind of hope disney would have hung like was was able to like still hang on to this franchise because well this uh you know this um we need uh, to poo uh because now whoever they lend it to uh, he went from you know, just wearing just a regular casual bear, not wearing a shirt. I mean, just not wearing pants. And, you know, he's a kind, loving animal thing. Yeah. He went from that. Now he's driving a BMW. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> I don't. Friday nights at Freddy's or something like those cheesy, uh, make a, a kid's cartoon into a horror kind of theme. That's what it kind of reminds me of. <laughs> Five nights at Freddy's. This is, this is insane. Like, I, I mean, I, 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 I just figured, like, I don't know what made them want to create this film, but it's just, like, I think the guys that made this film are just on acid. Have to be. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, man. It's just, like, this, this, 
I don't see this getting more than if it, we want to talk about ratings. I doubt that we're going to be getting like that shit's going to be even getting like a five or six. And I hate <laughs> and no I way. hate down I hate downplaying movies before they even come out because I like to give things a chance before you know anything. But this, come on, man, this even looks like a joke. Like, come on, you 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 know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it looks low budget <laughs> and it doesn't really, it really, really take much to make it. It's just like, it's they so- they just decided why not like let's just and mind you the christopher robin film i don't even think that did well as well like it may have and a lot of people actually probably liked it but it probably didn't do that good so if it was a continuation from that that's something that wasn't even that good to begin with it's like why can why continue this whole thing you know what i mean like <laughs> i know what i did was the attention's behind all this i just find it fairly silly and that and uh, that live action one, they were just saying that that bear looks creepier than th- <laughs> this mask one. That shit looks creepy. Yeah, hold on. Let me let me pull that up right now. Is this the Christopher <laughs> Robin one, right? Let me see. All right, the Christopher Robin. That came out 2018. That bear looked creepy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Why he looks look like that. Yeah, I don't know. He he does look like he's like fucking something's wrong with him. <laughs> He has like small little beady eyes. <laughs> Look at Piglet. He doesn't even know what's going on either. Shit looks man, it looks depressing. Yeah, I just think they probably should have just left them as a cartoon. Like, you know, yeah. Disney. Yeah, they probably just should have left it in the past. I'm not sure like what was the concept behind this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, like look at Tigger. Like, damn. <laughs> they look run down. <laughs> they look all pale. Yeah, t- yeah, that d- yeah, Tigger looks fucked up too. Yeah. <laughs> It's like damn one of those PSA commercials. It's like, oh, I I, I didn't even, I can't even like say too much because I didn't say the film that I didn't see the film, but it's just like so if, is it like was the guy telling a story and was he a part of the story? I don't fucking know. Like this this whole thing just seems weird, man. Like <laughs> this this whole thing just seems weird. That's what I'm saying. It's just like I think somebody's just trolling us at this point with uh Weenie the Pooh and them being serial killers. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be just probably one of those parody kind of movies where they make a, a spoof out of something. Well, I mean, hopefully, the, hopefully this, I mean, if it does go to theaters, that will, you know, it will go to theaters. But hopefully uh, it, it it goes like on HBO or some shit like that or Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> they honestly should just do that because on and I hate talking shit on something, but it's just like this. this come on, man. This this, this shit is a joke. Come on. Yeah, it's not the original <laughs> idea anyway, so we could. <laughs> Talk about this shit. Yeah, I remember seeing like IGN on there too. Like IGN was like, uh, it even them they were talking shit on it, and I thought it was funny. And I was just like, you know what, we 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 definitely got to talk about it on the podcast as well. And I was just like, this shit's a joke, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, it's dumb. but yeah, I mean, I got like I said, we already discussed it, our thoughts on it. Um, uh, when the movie does decide to come out, I think it would be I like the funniest thing in the world if that ends up being like one of the best horror movies <laughs> obviously <laughs> there's no release date and it doesn't i guess like it won't be coming out this year i'm guessing it's still in production so it might not be coming out this year it might be coming out probably like next year or some shit oh, okay yeah it, it won't it won't be it will be one of those situations where we completely forget about this whole thing and then when we go to when we go to the the movie theaters to kind of watch something else we'll get like that movie trailer and we're gonna see it there and we're gonna be like oh shit i forgot that this is coming out this is a real thing (laughs) (laughs) i don't think it's gonna have enough of a budget to have a official trailer like that it looks like really low budget (laughs) yeah it'll be tossed up on like an amazon prime kind of thing it's a whole new kind and and it's like i want to give the you know the whole team a chance because obviously you know it seems like everybody on this project is brand fucking new so you know definitely want to give them a chance but i it's like i don't know i don't think this is gonna go far (laughs) Well, what do you expect from trying to make a parody of a a, a kid's show, a kid's uh, book into like a horror movie? What do you expect people to react? So, and then it's uh, the production company is actually called Jag Jag Edge Jag Edge Productions. Never uh, heard, never heard of them before. Actually, in their mind, they've they've done a few things. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, they done a few, a few, a few, mu- uh, a few movies. Um, yeah. But I mean, a lot of them weren't really good movies as well. So, well, there we go. Yeah, this ain't gonna be well. But again, you know, uh, we'll see. We'll we'll have more to say about it when when we actually get an official trailer, and uh, when it decides to come out and stuff like that. We're not the biggest We Needed Pooh fans here at Cow Crunch here at Couch Crunch, but you know, I think it would. I think it's gonna be funny though to to, to kind of bring it up though and talk about it. Cause we already know it's not gonna go far. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, let's say what the hell. All right, and then we can go ahead and move on to Pinocchio. Now, the reason why I feel like I'm bringing up all these movies is just like I said, because I think it's a an interesting take on like some of these stories that have been around with me since I was a child. Because obviously, some of these things have been around way before I was even thought of. So. Um, the biggest thing I had to say about Pinocchio is that obviously, you know, I've never seen a Tom Hank, uh, Tom, I never seen Tom Hanks be a part of like a Disney film before he may have done like a voice acting gig for like one of their movies back in like the nineties or something, probably not sure, but I personally never seen him in like, in like playing live role, like a live role, uh, part in a Disney film. So I thought that was interesting. Okay. Huh, yeah. And I mean it does look like a, a really good it does look it does look good. I don't know the concept behind Pinocchio because I really didn't get a chance to really like see um the the cartoon one from the nineties. Oh um, yeah, I seen it a, a long time ago when I was growing up. You know, I grew up on all those I, old uh, Disney nineties films. I mean, I, I kind of got the concept from it though. It's like a fairy, right? That, that brings like Pinocchio to life or something like that. Like the fairy grants, like, uh, the work, the, the, the guy who works on like puppets and stuff like that. She granted him like the wish of bringing him, he wanted like a son or something right there, like that. Right. right. Yeah. He wanted a replacement of it for his son. Yeah. And him into a real boy. And that's, it's basically like a, a coming of age story of Pinocchio trying to be a real person, you know, trying to be, live like a real boy, but society sees him as a puppet and all this, you know, and he's just trying to live his life as a real person. And then she made him, I guess, like every time he lies, his nose grows longer or something like that, right? Yeah. And it's like a, um, a bug follows him around. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, Guide some basically. Gotcha. Yeah. So a, a grasshopper, my bad. Yeah, that's the, what the bug is. Oh, is okay. it Jiminy Cricket, right? I think. Yeah, Jiminy Cricket. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I, I don't, I do have somewhat, somewhat of expectations for this film. Um, just because I mean, Tom Hanks is a really good actor. Uh. Iconographs like done like the story of Pinocchio. Um, the only thing is, like I said, it, it's 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 sort of like uh, it's sort of like the other live action movie. I mean, the the other live films that they made, like the um, what was it, Aladdin, uh, Aladdin, what Lion else? King. Lion King, which kind of uh, destroyed our childhood a little bit. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast, right? Like, some of them don't really turn out well. I haven't heard... I mean, there's been people out there that's been, like, that were enjoying uh, these films when they first came out. Um, But, I I mean, I didn't hear a lot of good things about some of these films that that they keep destroying a little bit. So, I mean, I'm hoping, like, with this one, not just Tom Hanks being a part of it, but, you know, just uh, overall the storytelling of it will be great. You know, I know it's, it's aimed towards the children, obviously. Right. Um, but like I said, some adults actually do love like Pinocchio himself and would probably like tune in to watch it to see like, how, how does it face up to against like the old nineties film? You know what I mean? And uh, Pinocchio, I didn't know it was this old. This is actually older than both Mickey Mouse and uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh. It, the original book, Came out 1883. Good lord. Damn. Jeez. 
And uh, of course, Disney stole that uh, idea from that guy. Oh, you, I mean, you had to, right? Like, I mean, it's it's been a, a children's story, uh, like a, a what is it, like a storytelling uh, yeah, like for a children. Yeah. yeah, um, it's been around for like a couple decades now. So it's like, I mean, it's 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 amazing to see something like that fairy tale being a, being able to keep up like stay alive for this a long time like for this amount of time you know what i mean i think that's yeah. the most craziest part like a lot yeah. of things right cuz i mean there think about it there there must be tons of tons of things out there like tons of fairy tales that didn't even get a chance to like make it this big in the industry right so i mean i think that's uh that's one thing to consider right cuz i mean yeah. For your care to be revived over and over and over again like mm, this. Yeah. It's and even when they, uh, and then when, that's what I'm saying, even when other productions get gets a hold of that character, they kind of destroy the image of the character or, you know, if it yeah. just keeps going through production issues or it just keeps going through different, different, you know, different people being in control of this character. Um, right. It just somehow ends up fucking up after a while. Um, <laughs> but... It just seemed like they've been they've been doing good with I mean uh I'm they haven't been doing good obviously but I'm saying like in the in overall like the fact that they kept him alive for this kept them relevant for this a long amount of time this has been crazy. Oh yeah, they got the the machine behind them, so of course they <laughs> they got all the tools that they will or the money. And with him being a part of Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that, I think that was cool too. Oh yeah, they definitely give them a yeah. boost with the new generation. So, I mean, I think this would be a you know a good asset for uh you know like I said, I'm not the biggest Disney fan. Um, besides obviously Marvel, because I'm a huge Marvel fan. Um, but I think it's going to be interesting for the kids as well because I think the kids are going to be able to enjoy like the movie itself. Seems it it the quality sounds. I mean, the quality looks amazing. Uh. The music sounds fantastic because obviously it's going to be a lot of music, uh, like a lot of songs singing in the film because it's Disney. Yeah. Um. So I think it turns out good for the new generation. That's what I'm saying. I think like let's think about them. Like I think it's uh, a lot of the children are going to be able to enjoy this film, and hopefully they do. So I I, I definitely want to put that out there. Right. Yeah. Hoping for the best. Hopefully. The- Turns out better than Aladdin and, and Lion King. All right. So hopefully you guys, when the Pinocchio film does come out, we did we did see the uh, the recent trailer. Um, hopefully when it does come out, hopefully the kids will get to enjoy it, or also the adults as well. Hopefully it will just be a good film overall, and uh, for everybody to get the chance to get uh, to experience Pinocchio. For people like me who haven't really watched anything about Pinocchio, so I mean this might be my first time actually diving into Pinocchio, so I'll try it out. But yeah, hopefully you know it goes well for everybody. So, uh, oh yeah, another one I missed was a uh, uh, Dumbo. They about to make a live action of Dumbo. Yeah, too. that's right, that's right. I did hear about that too. I think um, who who's supposed to be on that? I think didn't they really make one already though? Uh, I I don't think it's out yet. Um, not that I know of, or did it already come out? Let me see. Dumbo. Yeah, 2019. Yeah, I could have sworn oh, okay. it came out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Danny DeVito, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure how that turned out, though. I think, uh, oh, INDB gave it like a six out of three, a six out of 10. I mean, that's not terrible, but. Yeah, that's not, like mid. That's mid, yeah. So, like I said, the, like, the, you know, them t- transforming these these amazing iconic characters from Disney, uh, you know, into live, act, like, live role, like, live. And like I um I'm twitch. yeah I can't I can't even get my words out of my mouth today sorry guys uh live action movies and stuff like that I mean it's just it doesn't end well for a lot of people so yeah but hopefully they do well with Pinocchio because you know Tom Hanks is like look I'm getting paid either way so I don't give a shit but overall <laughs> overall like it's going to be it's it's I think it should be like at least exceptional you know yeah good for the kids you know any better anyway um and yeah we'll just go ahead and move on to our next subject i think resident evil 4 remake all right okay so i mean resident evil 4 was already a good game to begin with in my opinion i don't even think it needed a remake for it to be 
uh, brought to the next generation of gaming. Um, I just think Capcom should already just kind of move on to like a <laughs> to like in my opinion, I just think like they should move on to like something different. I understand like a lot of people have they you know the big Resident uh, Resident Evil franchise themselves they have a huge fan base uh, yeah. for people to just wanting Resident Evil to continue. Um, and that's cool. That's awesome. I think that's that's an amazing experience. But it's like they keep talking about. I mean, they keep remaking the same shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like, uh, it gets exhausting after a while. Yeah. And is that a known thing now that they're just gonna do like redo the whole uh, Resident Evil series? Like from. It, um... it kind of looks like that. I mean. Because they did one, they did two. No, they didn't do one. They did two and three. I don't know why they didn't, they didn't do one. They should have done one. Um, they did oh, yeah. two and three, and now we're getting a four. And then what are they going to do? Five next? Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So, I mean, it. I mean, I think it's a fun experience. It, it, it'll be an amazing experience for us to get the the chance to you know see besides obviously Resident Evil village because we've seen what that was like when it came out uh i don't believe it was meant for next generation uh like ps5 and xbox series i believe right. that that was actually for ps4 and pc and stuff like that and xbox one um but they brought it to ps5 and xbox series like they they yeah, yeah they optimized it for the new consoles which obviously it was amazing um so i'm guessing like for us to experience what leon would be like in obviously 4k and you know, the next generation of gaming. Um, I guess that would be a cool experience, but it's the, going to be the same concept. I mean, they might change a few things with obviously the camera, and, like the camera mechanics and uh, things that were kind of difficult for us to really enjoy Resident Evil 4. But some people actually enjoyed the old style of playing Resident Evil 4, like how difficult it was, because that's what made the game difficult was like the camera angles and, you know, the... The, the how to shoot like when you had to shoot aim aim down sight with the enemies it was kind of difficult for us to really shoot at the enemies but oh okay it, yeah it was it, i mean it was it was fun you know so okay. i i don't know i mean i i guess people out there will be really excited for us to get a remake but i yeah, i mean they, I, i'm guessing they probably just gonna fix like a couple of bugs that was in the older one from 2005 like some of the technical aspects of it and just clean it up a bit i'm imagining right that's what I'm thinking too. I don't. I, I think this is that's probably the main purpose of this whole remake. Otherwise, I I, I don't understand why. Because I mean, I personally mean, I just I just want to be able to see like a new story added on to Resident Evil because it's the same thing being, excuse me, uh, being remade every single time. Um, yeah. When Capcom decides to make a remake, like it's the same thing. It's just it looks prettier. It looks it looks more. It's more smoother. Um. I just think they should be moving on to like not they, they if they want to stay with Resident Evil that's fine but just kind of change up the story a little bit I don't know like talk about a different side of the characters or some some shit like that or even introduce new character newer characters I know people are like such huge huge fan of Chris Chris Redfield you know Leon uh, uh -huh. you know Claire all of all of the OGs from you know the the original games but. Uh, you know, I just think it will be uh, more better for us to really get an experience of like new. We should, I think, we should probably start focusing like what the future will be like for Resident Evil. You know, instead of yeah. talking about the same shit, make it more advanced to the franchise, right? So, I mean, that's just that's just my opinion. I don't know, like, what do you think about it? Oh yeah, like you like you were saying, it looks clean. You know, it looks up to date to modern modern games as of lately. So it's like, uh, I I me personally, I never played any of the Resident Evils besides like a spinoff they made a while ago. But I guess for like a new person like me, I guess it I guess that's the the audience that they're trying to aim for, like the new generation or people that haven't played Resident Evil that just play through their catalog of games, right? and just have a more updated experience with it right so, be, right because they want to they they still want to give the fans uh something to really hang on to you know what i mean i think that's just the main the main point of this they just want people to just enjoy more of uh re the resident evil franchise and 
I mean, people are always going to do that, though. I, I feel like they're going to still be able to go back and play the, the original games. You know what I mean? Whatever okay. they choose to. But it's yeah. like, I, I just don't think like the time, uh, just time is being wasted on just remaking shit like that. Like yeah. four was great. Don't get me. That was actually one of the best ones of the entire series, in my opinion. But okay. it's like, it's just like. I don't see the point of making the remake. I'm I'm the I'm guessing the only exception for that is that obviously whoever didn't get a chance to play Resident Evil 4 and doesn't want to play the old the old original, you know, you know the old original game, you know, yeah, with dealing with saying. yeah, the dealing with like the frame rate and the camera angles and shit like that. I mean, I'm guessing like this would be a great opportunity for you to do that, but if you already got a chance to play it, it's not going to be any different. Though like the story is going to be the same, the mechanics is going to be the same. A little different, obviously, because that's the point of remaking the game. Right. Um, there's going to be a few things that's going to be different, but it's all the same shit. So I'm guessing that's the only plus, the only benefit for us getting a remake for Resident Evil 4. But again, I still think like it, it, it's not even worth it, in my opinion. Yeah, come on. Make some <laughs> if you're gonna bring something back from that hasn't got its just due, bring back dark dark stalkers or something like that. Yeah, you know, like, like that's see, that's a different that's a different take on things. You know what I mean? Like that's that's something different. That that's really all we want here at Couch Crunch is I can't speak for all the to all the members, but in my opinion, I just want kind of want like all of us uh, like, you know, most developers to kind of make something different instead of remaking the same shit over and over again. So yeah, so we already I get it with the Final Fantasy too. They're doing the same thing with that too. <laughs> yeah, but, they, but they've been they've been doing that for like decades though, right? Like I mean, yeah. there's that like Final Fantasy is like the General Hospital. If anybody doesn't know about that soap opera, that's been going on for like decades and years and shit like that. It's never stopped. It's like never ending. Like Final Fantasy is like that. Like it just did never stops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but like the same thing they did with uh, Final Fantasy VII, they brought it, they remastered it and remade it and everything. It's the same thing they're doing with is that, this. Is that the one that they had on PS5? Or Oh, yeah, PS5, PS4, yeah. So it's the same thing, like nothing changed. It was just new. It just looks prettier and stuff. Yeah. And so that one was more understandable because if you look back at the... <laughs> At the um the original um Final Fantasy Seven, it's like all pixelated and they look like like basically look like shapes. Like it's so out of date. Mm. So it's more reasonable with that versus this was Resident Evil came out two thousand five. The the graphics are not that too far behind. It's just of course compared to now, you know, with the new generation where I imagine they're aiming for. Mm. So that makes more sense. Right. Yeah, that does make. I mean, in that, in that, def, like, in that fen- like defense, like, I think that, I mean, it makes a lot more sense in that case. But with just Resident Evil, like, for, I mean, a lot of people are probably just excited for it. Um, again, I'm still probably going to end up checking it out because I'm still, I am still a, I'm not trying to, like, talk shit on it and not play it. I'm still going to probably play it. But yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just speaking my opinion on that because I just think, like, it's just kind of wasting time at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely with you. They should just make new IPs instead yeah. of hashing the same ideas over and over again. Well, so I, I agree with that, like new IPs as well. But it's like, obviously, if I'm speaking from if I'm speaking from like a Resident Evil fan, um, obviously, we just had Village, right? Like that wasn't even that long ago. So it's like. And then, and then you know, to add on the add on to that game like we're still we're we're in the talks of i don't know how true this is but there was like rumors saying like they were they were gonna have dlc for that game and it's like the game has already been already played at like a million times from everybody you know there's people out there that's i don't know if they've tried it i don't i have no idea but um it's it's been uh, already like almost what I think it came out like last year or two years ago, but it's like you waited this long to drop a DLC where it's not the game is not really hot anymore, and it's like it like I don't th- I don't think nobody's gonna want to buy it. 
I'm guessing true true Resident Evil fans probably will try it out for sure. Yeah, the but, the, the core bit, fan base probably is. Yeah, but uh, that just doesn't make any sense for us to wait this long for you to just drop DLC for it. So I don't know. Um, uh, I mean, the game did pretty well too, so I'm pretty sure some people are anticipating it. But yeah. I mean, we we just recently got Village, so for us to get another remake of a of a game that's came that came out like what 2005 or something like that like a long time yeah. ago it's like we just got village though it's, it's just like the timing is just off for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know oh yeah speaking of that too th- both of those two uh resident evil 4 and um resident evil village they're gonna get a vr version of their their game as well so yeah coming along with it see so. and that that's that's an awesome take though i mean because i think a lot of people are it, like the vr experience is actually like skyrocketing like a lot of people is bringing a lot of these games into vr especially village i think a lot of people might have fun playing that game and in, in uh in v in the vr experience because it's just it's terrifying it's all it's terrifying you're always running from things and things are always popping out at you so i think that that's going to be a fun experience for and you said the remake is actually also going to be on the the resident evil 4 remake is actually going to be on the the vr as well Yes, the VR too. My bad. That's right. Because PlayStation is really trying to push the VR too now with the PS Five. Oh, so oh, okay. So they're only gonna be on like those like that VR. Okay. Yeah. It's not gonna yeah. be on like like the Oculus or some shit like that then. Yeah. Yes, uh, not. Well, also seeing that Horizon is about to get our VR uh, game too. Horizon um for PlayStation. What is it? Uh, the new Horizon that just came out. Yeah, they're making like a a, side, a spinoff game. That's a, that's an interesting thing, though. I mean, to 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 have a Horizon in it, yeah. a VR experience. Yeah, wonder how that's gonna turn out. And it's funny too, because I remember like a couple months ago, we when we was talking about the VR two when it first was being uh, released, that uh, out one of my advice was like to put the the triple A games into the VR two, mm. so it could bring more attention and. And look what they're doing now. They actually bring in like the triple A games onto the You did you did mention that. that a long time ago too. I remember you saying that. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So what's next? They're gonna bring God of War in uh VR experience. <laughs> right. Like yeah. I mean Horizon is 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 different. I mean, I, I don't even know what to kind of expect to be like I don't think that that's one of the games that should be in uh, VR though I think that it's already fine the way it is but to be in yeah. VR it's like how how is that going to play out I mean obviously um it's not going to be the same game though right like I think like it's going to be changed up a little bit right yeah it's like a, it's kind of like a spin, it's not the exact game it's like a spin off yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I was that's what I was thinking too cuz it did the same thing with like that until dawn thing that roller coaster fucking experience oh, right. like I'm saying like it it's still the same game but it's in a different setting or some shit like that right but with Resident Evil, those are going to be the same game. It's just a first person point of view. Yeah, see, but that that's that's expected though, because like they're horror games and shit like that. Like, of right. course, they want you to still experience the same thing because in in that case too, it's first person. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, yeah, it oh, makes sense. right? It makes more sense with them. Well, four wasn't first person; it was third. So I'm guessing they're transitioning it, uh, transitioning yeah. uh, Resident Evil Four remake. Um, into first person for the VR experience, but I'm guessing on the regular, the regular release, like the regular game itself, I think is going to be in third, uh, third person as well. Yeah, it makes more sense. Yeah. So I mean, I, I like I said, I mean, I'm not trying to like bomb uh, Resident Evil, like you know, for it, you know, Resident Evil Four rem- remake coming out, but um, I just, I, I'm just trying to just say like. I'm not the most exciting person when it comes to this coming out, but I'm, I still appreciate it though, because I am still a Resident Evil fan. I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of saying like, I think it's just a little too early for us to really be getting a remake. Uh, just right after we just got Resident Evil Village. You know what I mean? Yeah. It seems like these remakes are just set on the schedule and they're just pumping them out every time. Yeah. Yeah. Do they just, you know, but again, like, it. but like, like, but but again, like we what we said earlier, it's it gives people a chance that haven't got a chance to play, uh, you know, um, 
Resident Evil 4, the original one. And, yeah. you know, it gives them it gives them experience to play it in like these day and age of gaming. So, yeah, I think that's that, what it's for. Yeah, I think that'll be a fun experience for people like that out there. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, I mean, when it comes out, I don't even know the release date for it. Hold on, let me check that out right now. Mm-hmm. As an evil. Maybe like eventually once they finished all these remakes, they would probably make like a collection pack of all of them, I imagine. I, then I'll probably check them out. If they end up doing something like that. Look, and it, it's, it's coming out in next year. So... <laughs> Okay. I, I mean, I guess like it's that's fair enough. Uh, when did hold on? When did Resident Evil Village come out? I think that came out two years ago, right? No, last year. Yeah, still, it right. still, still came out. La- it came out last year, and we're getting a remake next year. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's not a remake. It's like a VR version of the Village. No, 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 no. I'm saying like the remake, like Resident Evil Four remake. Like, oh yeah, I'm saying it's still still close. Like we just got Village last year. Uh, oh right. right, yeah, yeah. They're taking advice from you know Star Wars. They just pumping shit out. out <laughs> <here from Italy. laughs> they just like let's keep going. No, 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 no. They're 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 getting advice from uh, Rockstar. They just they keep making the same shit. Oh yeah, Rockstar's <laughs> worse because they just do the same game. Like, so. I just seen an advertisement recently of them giving a free. Free online pads for the uh, Grand Theft Auto Five for PS Five. I'm like, are you serious? Are you still advertising this game for like a whole decade? Yeah, Ooh. man. Like they, they don't want to get off this. They don't want to get off this subject, man. It's just they. Yo, they I don't know Rockstar. They starting to disappoint me for the past yeah, couple years. You know? No, they. Yeah, they fell off, man. I remember being so excited when Grand Theft Auto uh, Five came out the first time back in like 2013. That was it. Was such a fun experience, but. I don't know, man. After after so long, after so many years have passed by, it's like they they just continue to let me down. <laughs> it's getting so bad to the point where every time they come out with a trailer for uh, Grand Theft Auto Five in the comment section on YouTube, they had to disable the comment section because so many people complain about them not making a new game. Right. So they had to cut up, disable the comment section. <laughs> It's so it's bad. Crazy. I feel bad for them, but I mean, I don't know. They, I guess, they just got to get it together. I mean, they, they keep saying, you know, there was a bunch of rumors that six was supposed to come out. Like some, I don't, not. There's no release date on that. It was just all rumors. But uh, you know, we'll definitely see. Like uh, you know, hopefully we'll see like a release date for that soon because you know that's it's, it's it's just I don't know. It just needs to go. Um. But yeah, like I said, uh, hopefully um, with Resident Evil 4 remake coming out next year, hopefully you guys get it, you know, the new upcoming, pl- I mean, the new players to Resident Evil, the franchise that, you know, obviously go back and play the original games or, you know, even start with Resident Evil 2 or definitely if you're one of those people that needs to go in order, play the first one, play the Resident Evil 2 remake, uh, then play 3, then, you know, play 4 or 5 and so on and village as well um but with four coming out uh if you haven't got a chance to play resident evil 4 yet just wait until this one comes out and then you know you should be able to have fun with that yeah it's right around the corner so um all right we can go ahead and move on to our next topic do 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 scorn my friend yeah i know you were excited about this move this game Oh yes. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and let you lead this this topic. Well yeah. Scorn is a very intriguing one because it's like I haven't seen this kind of take on a horror game at all, really. It's like you're basically like from from what I gathered from the story, it's like you're taking a on uh the carrier character of um like an alien actually. It's like a he- alien half human that's like placed on this spaceship. And uh, you're basically trying to find your way out of there, and it's like that's it's kind of like a survival type based game where it's like biomechanic and you interact with like the different creatures that you can attach onto your your arm as and use as like weapons, or whatever, just to defeat like different aliens that are trying to kill you. It's 
It's interesting. I thought it was interesting, too, because I just got a chance to watch the gameplay from it. It kind of gives me that Cthulhu vibe, like, you know, that the type of creatures and shit like that. Like, it's just, it's very, very bizarre. Um, yeah. What I thought was unique about it, like you said, it was just, uh, you know, the, the weapons in the game. Uh, they transform from being a pistol to a shotgun to a fucking key. Like, yeah. that's... I've never seen that in the game before. That's different. That's I see. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm looking for. It's like shit like that. Like even with um, it being a new per, like a new developer. I think it's called uh, was it Egg uh, E Dub or something like that. Hold on. Yeah, and the the creator of it, he uh, started off by himself creating the game, and then eventually throughout time, it, it started off in uh, 2016 the development of the game, and then eventually it started to. Re- recruit uh, more game developers onto the so i have no idea what the budget was like for this game i mean obviously games out there still running on unreal engine 4 um that's still a good concept i mean it's i mean it's still there's i'm not sure like how the budgeting was but i'm i'm i was like kind of certain like games were start pushing on unreal engine 5 because you know that came out recently yeah. Um, but I think a lot of games are going to be put like using Un- Unreal Engine five next year. I think most of the games are still running on uh, Unreal Engine four um, for this year. Um, but going back to the developers, it's called E Ebb Software, and this is actually their very first game that they've uh, developed. So I thought yeah. that was I thought that was interesting for them to kind of conjure up something like this. I mean, it's interesting how the character, the, the enemies. Uh, the theme of it, everything just seems like very, like set in like an alien type spaceship thing. Yeah, it's very inspired by the actually the movie Aliens too. The, oh, I can see uh, that. I yeah, like the, the artist that did that, H. R. Geiger, the 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 director of this uh, game is very inspired by that artist that did the the costume designs for the alien creatures in the movie for the movies and everything so it's very inspired by the yeah like look at look look at some of this concept work dude like uh, there's the one with him like putting his face on the girl's chest or some shit like that and uh the hands are you know like a tad like there's some sort of like uh i don't even know how to describe it it's like a weird tentacle thing that's kind of going through his arm yeah it's very interactive with the environment as you play the game, it's it's interesting. I want to know, like, I want to kind of dive into, like, uh, like what's the what's the plot to this game? You know, yeah. hold on, let me kind of bring that up. It says, "Scorn is an upcoming first person bio biopunk survival um, horror adventure video game developed by that." Do do do. There's no like details. I'm really am kind of curious to see like what this game is actually really about. Oh, you know what? I remember reading an article like uh, earlier in the year when I was looking up information about it that um the director wanted leave wanted to leave the story very vague because he wanted to surprise the audience on. No, uh, he wanted like, people to come. really. Gotcha. He wanted people to kind of get the experience while they while they play the game. Right, like gotcha. things will happen as you play it. It's like very survival like it looks very fucking smooth too. Like I think it looks like it runs on sixty frames as well. Oh yeah, cool. that's another thing too. That um, the creator said he the reason why he wanted to put it on the next gen uh, consoles because uh, he wanted it to look as as the art originally looked. So he had to put all the ray tracing and all the the updated graphics onto it. So that's the reason why it's on the more updated con- the new generation consoles only. And then I see that it I see somewhere that's actually going to be a part of Game Pass as well. Would it would it be? Yeah put on game pass i think that'll be an awesome feature because i think this is only like an xbox exclusive right like xbox yeah. exclusive and win and pc right yeah xbox and pc so, so i think that'll be interesting if it gets uh if it gets added on to game uh the xbox uh, xbox game pass so that way it gives people a chance to really play it the first day for free right. but i doubt that it's going to be that way because obviously with them being um their first game they probably want to want people to buy this game 
Yeah, because they're more independent. They're not like a big studio. They're yeah, starting. that's what I'm saying. For them to make some of this money back, putting all this uh, money into making the game, for sure, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to probably re- uh, resell this at, if I had to be honest, maybe 40 bucks the most. Yeah. Because it's yeah. obviously yeah. it's their very first game. They can't put 60 bucks on a game. Like, it, it looks great. I mean, it does. But I'm saying like, it doesn't look like one of those triple triple platform like games and stuff like that. Like I think it it just looks like a game that's just for people to try out, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how, how long the game is or anything, but it's so bizarre, dude. Like look at it's it's it's, it's interesting that uh the, the creator of this started off by himself just making a game and then he eventually recruited I wish team I could, members there the years went on. I wish I can dive into like the sketches on making like some of these characters like some of this like artwork, man. This shit is fucking crazy. Yeah, it's very detailed. Like everything in there. Like I remember watching the gameplay video on, on YouTube and I seen uh I kind of seen like the they, they show like some of the sketches on how the way they the, how the way they want the movements to to like for the character to go in. I'm yeah. guessing, and I thought that was interesting how they showed like the sketches on how the movements were. Like they showed the oh, process. Okay. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Yeah, this came a long way. It started off in 2016. And yeah, you said to- it was in production that long, right? Like, yeah, it's about to come out this year in October, I believe. Yeah, yeah. this this one looks it. It really does one. It like honestly looks really good for like a horror game and. I, I don't know. Yes. It might be really good as far as like it might be one it, really high up there as far as horror games uh, for 2022, because obviously we're not getting a lot of those in, in 2022 as well. I mean, we have Evil Dead, but Evil Dead, like like we said before in the previous episode, like that's really like a survival game. This ain't this is not really a survival. It's like a story based driven game. Seems like. Right. Yeah, so, it's very story based survival kind of game. Yeah, so it just seems like uh, for horror, story driven base. Uh, it just yeah, it just seems like this might be up there because I don't see a lot of games like that. Besides the Quarry, for sure, I think the Quarry might take like will be number one for horror. But we'll see how this one turns out. It didn't seem like there was a lot of jump scares. There were a lot of different creatures in there that just randomly pop up in your face. But I'm saying, like, there's no, like, jump scare scenes or anything like that as far as for what we see. But, again, like you said, he's – he's uh, the, the person who made this game is hiding everything about the game because they want, they want people to get the real experience when they purchase the game or play the game. Right. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of my anticipated horror games of the year. Like, I'm really looking forward towards that one particularly. And it'd be crazy if they, uh, I remember we were speaking about the Steam Deck on the other episode, if they uh, also put, if they do put it on the oh, game. Oh yeah, pass, that would be cool. On that, to play, have access to that. That'd be good marketing. That would be a cool fucking game to be at, to be added on there. Or even the Switch too. The thing that will be fire. Oh yeah. Well, seeing that the, the creator wanted yeah. to be high graphic, it probably won't be able to. That hold the uh, switch graphics. Yeah, but. that's right. Yeah, because the switch only goes up to 1080p still. It's yeah. Yeah. No, well, that makes sense. I mean, for for PC players to get to enjoy, and you said October, dude. That's fucking perfect timing for like horror too. Like that's amazing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yo, like, because you know that you know Halloween being on that, you know this uh, on October. I think like the spirit of horror is gonna be like in the air, and I think it's it'll be an amazing experience for you to like try this game out during Halloween time. That that would be awesome, dude. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Definitely looking forward to scoring. Oh yeah, yeah. This this is gonna be a good game. I I I personally think it's gonna be a good game because, like I said, it's a new IP, uh, different experience, um, and it just looks like a lot of fun. It does. Yeah. It looks a lot of fun for like a game that doesn't is not really high budget, and for a new for a new game development, a new game developer, um, it looks a lot of fun. So for sure, yeah. guys, if you guys haven't heard about Scorn, definitely check it out on YouTube. You know, tell us what your thoughts and opinions on this game is. What do you feel like? What do you guys feel like that this game is, uh, you know, going to be 
could it be a series? You know, could it be a score in two? Can it be a score in three? Like, can it lead down? Like, in long term wise, can it be that great? Or do you guys feel like it, it's just going to be one of those games that's just going to, you know, flop after a while? So I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts on this uh, on this game. Yeah, definitely give it a look. And with our final topic, obviously, this is, you know, it's Fortnite, man. Always been a Fortnite fan. But, uh, you know, Star Wars, man, Star Wars <laughs> is taking over the universe in 2022, man. It's just... Good grief. Yeah, like even though with those two games not even coming out this year, but it's just getting a lot of recognition. Like, you know, with with uh Obi-Wan coming, uh, you know, Obi-Wan dropping, you know, a few is it last week. Uh right. you know, those two games. Uh now now we're getting a, a new season with uh, you know the Star Wars <laughs> being implemented in Fortnite. So I mean, I seen Dark Vader up there. Uh, on the trailer for the new season, I thought that was cool too, and I was just like, "Man, it's it's <laughs> it's it's it's, it's, just, it's been a it's been a lot a, like a big year for for Star Wars fans, man. Yeah. It's just taking over the universe. Yeah, and uh, also uh, Star Wars Visions Two is about to be released. Yeah, look at uh, that season two. It's right. like, whoa, man! Like what? It, like Star Wars blew up, bro. Yeah, they they're pumping that that machine for Star Wars. They they trying to milk it for all they got. <laughs> Doesn't even know what they're doing. Star Wars fans are probably like, yo, and and you <laughs> did say it too. Like I I know we're we're here to talk about Fortnite, but you know I did wanted to get Don's opinion on. I think he did get a chance to uh uh to watch Obi Wan. I think the very first episode. What you thought about that, man? Oh yeah, the first episode so far. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Like taking place after um Obi Wan. I mean, uh, Luke, uh, you know, um, Dark Vader's story, they they showed a flashback and everything. It's it's all right so far. Yeah, that's a, it's it's amazing. We're definitely going to do a, a separate episode of us, like, really diving into that. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to get your opinion on that because I, I, I thought it was fucking amazing. Um, oh. Just because, like, I'm, I'm a huge Obi-Wan Kenobi fan. And, uh, you know, for us to really see, like, what events took place after what happened in clone wars was interesting so i thought that was a good way to start start out the film and i have to say too the little girl that plays princess leia is fucking adorable i'm sorry <laughs> she is the most precious little thing and i just want to give her a hug in real life <laughs> it's good to see her again yeah it it really is yeah because with the real princess leia in real life i forgot the actress name she passed away god rest her soul um yeah. Uh, it's good to see that they kind of br- brought back Princess Leia. We have no idea, like, for how long. I think it's just for the series. Um, I don't think, like, they're going to keep her around. Uh, but it's it's an interesting take to see, like, what happened after Clone Wars with Obi-Wan. Yeah. And, you know, it's definitely going to... Because obviously, I, you know, I, I everybody who knows Star Wars like that, I'm not the biggest person on it. Um... But they were, I'm pretty sure, like, Obi-Wan did end up passing away. Not sure. I think it was one of the old films that he died saving somebody, I think. I for, uh, saving Luke, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he died doing that. But um, they never showed it. Like I said, it's interesting to see, uh, to see, like, him going through, like, the... Like I said, I don't want to, like, spoil or anything like that. But um, him going through a lot of difficult challenges uh, after years of, you know, what happened after Clone Wars. It's cool to see all that. So definitely yeah. we'll dive more into that on a, on, a, on a different episode for us to cover more of Obi-Wan. But it's good to get see that, man. Time. Yeah, you get to see a good in, insight in the in-between time period of what happened. Yeah. What it's so I don't know about I don't know about the book of... Uh, Bubba Fett. I'm sorry. That one was like my least favorite. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get a chance to catch that one either. Yeah. I mean, you're not, I mean, I don't know if I might get, you know, shit on him for saying like, you know, this series, I mean, that series, I mean, that series was garbage, but it's not that it was, uh, gar- it, you know, not that it was garbage, but it's just, it wasn't as good as Mandalorian and, you know, Obi-Wan and stuff. Yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying anyway, from what I hear. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Star Wars fans are not really pleased when it comes with these new series anyway. So you're not going to be um, chased down. But with Fortnite, with implementing, uh, you know, uh, Star Wars, I think that'll be a cool a cool feature to have because i mean i've been trying to get the red trooper for like forever and this is my good great opportunity to to get him i don't know if he's actually a part of the the battle pass but i think that'll be a cool unique thing i i haven't got a chance to really dive into it i'm not sure if like the 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 like the actual battle pass is out for it already i just see like trailers and stuff like that for it but it would be a cool concept for us to see like you know in like the Star Wars universe or some shit like that. Like that would be a cool thing. Or us, they finally we'll probably get some lightsabers as pickaxes. I thought that would be a fucking a fun thing to see. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. It's kind of it reminds me of when uh, around the time when Mandalorian came out, they obviously advertised the Mandalorian Fortnite as well with the the skin and everything. So it's kind of like a similar situation to that with this. Oh yeah, look at Obi Wan. Okay, yeah, yep. It's it, I'm definitely late to the party, but there is there is Star Wars related things and uh you know, and and um and like the world and stuff like that. You can see like the spaceships around there is from what I see. I just pulled up the video. Uh the lightsabers in there, that's cool. So I'm saying like I think like for Star Wars fans, this would be a great time to really dive into Fortnite. Yeah. And if you guys haven't tried it out, be Darth Vader. Obviously, he's probably going to be like level 100 to probably get or like bonus characters to get. Obi-Wan's right there. I feel like they did this because Obi-Wan was coming out. So they wanted to do this. You know how Fortnite really does anything that's yeah, it's like, advertisement. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like gaming now is like the new wave of advertising, you know, franchises. You think Especially so? like, like games like Fortnite and PUBG and things of you know, battle royale games. You think so? Like, you think it's a great way for them to put out content like that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, they get their franchise out, like, they advertise to the kids. That's, like, a billboard for them. That's, like, the new age billboard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, for, like, like games like Fortnite, yeah, I could see that. Um, yeah, because it's, like, a big, big platform with a lot of people playing it, so it's, like... I think the they thing get kids audience and I think the like, thing is with like from what I when I play Fortnite I think it's just a fun experience to just play as the the characters that you really adore like or love you know what I mean like it gives you a, it's such an awesome feel even though it's just a skin it's still cool it's like a cool concept to play fucking you know characters that that never been in the video game before. Like me and me and Mira said it on one of the episodes before. Like it's very diverse. Like it's very interesting. This the play is fucking, I don't know, uh, Rick. Like you know, uh, what's that? Rick and Morty or fucking uh, Darth, like Star Wars or God of War. Or I always thought that was like such a cool concept to play whatever uh, character that you wish to play. If if it's on the store or for if it's being pub like sold or anything like that of course yeah money's involved and it sucks that's the worst part about the game um but it's still a fun experience for people to really enjoy those characters more i think that's the best connection about fortnite in my opinion oh yeah, oh, yeah for sure a lot of people get enjoyment out of that yeah of it too and with the building aspect I, I don't know if that's still in there i took a break from it but uh with that being gone i mean it's it's still hard but um, it's still fun to play though, for sure. Oh yeah. So yeah, people are in Fortnite. So again, check it out. So again, for Star Wars uh fans out there, like, dude, you guys are getting fucking like the luckiest fan base ever because like, dude, Star Wars is like fucking taking over the world. Like <laughs> Yeah, they pumping out their content. Disney is putting in the work. I'm just curious to see like what um how the how the tar like the Star Wars game e Eclipse is gonna be like when that comes out. And because uh, we were eight, we I think it's about created by the people that made uh Heavy Rain and everything. And that's gonna be a different twist on a Star Wars game created by the That's what I'm saying. Green. Like I think that's gonna be murder. Like that's gonna be crazy, bro. Yeah, that's gonna be different. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what that's gonna come out like. Right, that's what I'm saying. Um, and then obviously with uh, Survivor coming out, I mean, 
I already, I already, we kind of already have an expectation of that because we already played Fallen Order, so we already know what to kind of expect, like just new things happening in there. We already talked about that on the previous episode, but yeah, um, it's just Star Wars in general, man. Like they're just blowing. They're 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 very popular, very trending nowadays. Uh, you know, I, I'm just curious to see where Obi Wan's gonna like leave off things in that series. Yeah, like, where is he gonna? I imagine it's probably going to be another series after this. <laughs> I have a feeling. I went to the story of Yoda or something. <laughs> Yoda's the best one, man. Let's really talk about it. Let's let's say who's the best fucking who's the best fucking Jedi, bro. But what about uh, Samuel J? <laughs> Samuel J. He was a, he was actually one of the he he's actually on, he's on this like. There's this list on, I don't know how true it is, on this website that I found. Uh, it, it goes in order, like, who the best Jedis of all time is. He was oh. actually one of, He was actually one of those Jedis that was on there. Oh, yeah. I know he's pretty up there in the ranks. Yeah. He just died. He dies in all of them. <laughs> he does in every movie he outside died, of Star Wars. All either. the time. Yeah. <laughs> every He just has that characteristic that he just, he, they always kill him in the movies. He's gonna curse his way to death, you know, all the time. <laughs> um, but in my opinion, uh, I'm only gonna name five. If I don't even know that many fucking character, but obviously in my order, I'm gonna say Yoda because Yoda's like the best fucking Jedi of all time. Oh yeah, the, you got hyper speed bouncing all over the place. Yeah, my man is just like, like he'll just go ahead and swipe your head off like clean. Um. <laughs> After that, I would say Obi Wan, because again, I'm such a huge fan of him. Luke, uh, Anakin, and who else am I leaving out? And uh, hold on, I, I gotta think now. See, people are like, see, he's one of those surface, those surface fans. He doesn't know. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> See, I'm probably even worse. I'm like a casual fan. I I barely know any of the characters outside of the main group. You know. Uh, I probably got brushed back up on the uh, older movies. It's been such a long time since I even seen the one they showed a flashback of in the, the first episode of Obi One. It's been so so long, decades. Yeah, because the Clone Wars played such a big role, like in that cartoon. I didn't know that was like a continuation from the show. Oh yeah, yeah. They you know I, I, I hear mean? a lot of the uh, Star Wars fans <laughs> like that series too, the, the animated, because it goes real deep into detail about the backstories of the characters and everything. The main group. Oh yeah, uh, Liam Neeson's character. Yeah, that that would be my fifth one. It's called uh, Queen Queen Gon Jin. Quay, I don't know how to like really pronounce that. <laughs> Dude, Samuel Jackson's character looks fucking ugly though on the cartoon version. <laughs> it's like a booger. No, he just looks like a monkey. <laughs> like he looks weird, dude. Yeah, I don't know what the. F- I got. I never watched that series on Cartoon Network. I, but I hear it's a really good though. Here, hold on. I don't know if I. Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me just show you this face. Uh, it's just it. It's very distracting. <laughs> yeah. Are about to send it to my phone? No, you just look on. Look on your screen. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'm black, so I can see this. He does look like an eight. <laughs> <laughs> It was like a primate. Look how look how <laughs> look how strong his face is though. <laughs> look, look at the eyebrows. Like <laughs> oh, nobody made it this far into the podcast. We're gonna get canceled. That's fine. No, I mean look listen, bro. I'm gonna be real. Like it's just <laughs> like <laughs> there's something there's something wrong. Flying into the apes. <laughs> Uh, why they gotta do Samuel Jackson dirty like that? It's always him. They're always <laughs> doing it. Everybody else, look, everybody else looks normal on this on this like screen, but you know, <laughs> look, is he like every, they capture everybody that's n- normal? But then when you scroll down to him, they just fucked his whole face up. <laughs> and he, <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, I've never seen that before. He does it like an ape. I didn't see that his character in that show. Yeah, look, look, see, and then and, and you don't even realize too. Like if you go ahead and 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 see. Uh, <laughs> If you go ahead and see Obi Wan's face, like every every everybody looks normal. Everybody looks actually like carrot like actual characters. Then you just you just got this jackass. <laughs> he kind of look like E. T. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad, bro. You, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. But yeah, that concludes everything about like, you know, Star Wars, man. I mean, we we're definitely gonna do an um another uh episode um just really talking about Obi Wan and uh we're gonna dive more into that series. But I think we covered up everything on this episode, buddy. You think so? Oh, oh yep. Covers everything. All right. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content we've been talking about on today's episode. Hopefully you leave a like, subscribe, and follow us on all social media platforms. And uh, yeah, and um, hopefully we'll see you guys on the next episode. Yeah, have a good one, everybody. All right. Heading out. Peace.